What's going on, world? Welcome back to another Black Sheep Perspective. We got one of my coolest, longest running homeboys with us today, a big time guest of mine that I got so many stories I can share with. Before I get to him, Gus, another one. Another one. We need that button, man. It's there. Hit it real quick. Oh, wait, we can't because of the, uh, we still got to figure. Oh, by the way, I upgraded that shit. I got to tell you all that. (laughs) I forgot to tell you. We probably have the only person here who can actually, uh, Yo, that's um, a good point. Critique yeah, us on the on our intro music. Yeah, whether, yeah. whether it's soft or it's hard. Nick, we got DJ Chaos on, from Miami, time. man. One of the very most well known DJs in Miami. He's been with us for a long time. Back when I was in the club game, two thousand and help me out, Nick. Um, two thousand four. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Four or five. I, I always have to. I would say between 2004 and 2006. Was was when we were going hard at it, right? I mean, you're still doing it, obviously, but when I first met Nick, um, we could just call him Chaos from here on out. When I met Chaos, it was uh, I was working at Banana Joe's slash Margarita Mama's. Yep. Only club I ever knew that had two names, and it was because it was two floors that did different things during the days. One was a bar, almost like wanna, wannabe Keys-like, you know, like you know that, that type of setting, yeah. island-like. Another one was more a uh, dance bar lounge, whatever. So, regardless, you know, Banana Joe's, Margarita Mamas, any of you old schools out there who uh, re- remember the name and remember the stories, we were in Coconut Grove. Grove. Back then, Coconut Grove was popping. Yeah. The Gus, when we were there, I told you when it used to pop, and I told you, wait to the future. That's going to be, you call it the new Brickle, right? You said it'll yeah. be the new Brickle. It'll, it'll probably be the new. I think, that's a, I think that's a very good comparison. What it's do you think? Modern. Let's, let's hope the residents uh, don't complain about the music and, you know, the traffic and, and hopefully. It's a very wealthy place. They probably will. Uh, otherwise, what would it be? It's going to continue. And they're building shit there, dog. You, you know, in the middle, uh, what, what, the cross, the Cocoa Walk. Cocoa Walk. You know, the big ass building. I just saw it for the first time like two weeks ago. It's, it's a real estate matters, man. You know, so wherever real estate is, people are going to complain and we're going to go somewhere else. That's it. That is true, man. That Remember is true. There was true. a grove that we went to downtown, and after downtown, it was the beach, and then the beach, or vice versa, it was the beach, and then downtown, and then- Well, shit, t- take us way deeper than that, because I, I only played such a small role. I think I lasted three, maybe almost four in the uh, nightlife scene, but with you, hardcore, we were going yeah. hard at it for two years. How did you get into DJing, you know, and uh, give everybody a little backdrop on all that. A little, little background on me DJing. I started off when I was about 15 years old. I uh, went to New York, and I had a cousin who was DJing in Long Island. And he took me one night when I was 15, and I was like, I fell in love. So I came back home, and I was like, Mom, this is what I want to do. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two years later, I go to a house party, and there's a guy DJing with two cassettes off of what he recorded off of uh, Power 96. And I was like, that's what I want to do. So cassettes. You, cassettes. Ju- you just blew the minds off whoever's... Younger than 25 years old. <laughs> Cassettes. What the fuck is that? They're over there Googling was, it right now. I, I don't remember them, but I know I was alive for that. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. So there was a little store down south um, in Cutler Ridge that um, owned by some Jamaicans. And they used to sell records and they sold yeah, speakers. And, and we used to go over there and just listen to r- music all day. And then, you know, one day for Christmas, my parents bought me my first turntables speakers and you know after that was after i did a party and i blew all their shit out <laughs> and then since then it just took off little by little you were always running solo or were you always with teamed up with somebody because um, back in our days you know you were side by side a lot with um with uh so back back in the days um i had different crews i used to party with you know there was a partiers crew i had uh, big mike and his crew i had keto sunshine and his crew uh, and these were what promoters these are all promoters okay these are all promoters. So I remember the first time we walked into uh, Margarita Mama's, and I, you know, I was like, man, this shit's not gonna work. And lo and behold, it was the best Thursday night there was ever in Miami, maybe yeah. ever. Yeah. To give everybody a little a little background on um, that night or Margarita Mama's <clears throat> in regards to the club itself, so we were the only, the only eighteen and over club, yeah, in Miami, on. Thursday on Thursday night, um, and Friday night. Except there was one other club in South Beach that was eighteen and over, but nobody wanted to drive over there because all these kids were you know drinking and yeah, doing. Yeah, for me during my time it was the Cove. The, the Cove. Where was that at? Uh, La Coacha. La Coacha. Is, that what you, is that what you call the Cove? Yeah, La Coacha. The Cove. Oh shit! I didn't know they nicknamed me that. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> hey man, it is what it is, you know. But anyhow, so 
everybody was coming to our place. I mean, and then you had there was nowhere else to go. And then, but also props to the Grove. The Grove was popping back then. There, yeah. there was. Um, Senior, not nah, senior. Was it senior? Yeah, senior frogs. Well, I think was still open in the very beginning. Yeah, you had the sandbar. Sandbar. Barracudas. The bar what, scene. What was the uh, the club down? Oxygen. Yeah. But but was it called before that, that it went to it oxygen? Oxygen. Oh, oxygen? It was. Yeah, oxygen. And then you had um, Fat Tuesdays, which was popping, and everything was twenty one and over. Yeah, it, it, minus us. And then you had Saturday, which was girls could be eighteen and over, guys had to be twenty one. Yeah. It was insanity, Gus. It was insanity, bro. We used to be so fucking packed. You would have thought somebody was performing every night. No, it was so packed that you would feel the floor. Yeah. Up and down. Boom. Yeah. Shaking. Yeah. It was. That was it was GQ and me. GQ, that's who it was. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, GQ, that's my brother right. for life. Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing great, man. He just had a baby girl and he's got a little bar business going on and he's doing good, man. Good for him. Good for him, man. But you know, back then also it was booty shaking shit. It was still booty shaking, booty yeah. shaking your ass off. It wasn't much. I mean, you know, you had your other little stuff, but house or whatever you want to call it, techno or whatever, like like dove stepping and shit wasn't that. Nah, 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 nah. Nah. So I remember in the back room, um, we opened up our reggaeton room. I don't know if you remember that in the little patio. Yes, of course, of yeah. course, of course. There was a little reggaeton. Shout out to Maudi. He used to try to get on the DJ system yeah. here and there. <laughs> Always screaming on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Dominicans, bro. Yeah, I remember we had that, and then our room was mainly hip hop and you know whatever. But house, pfft, there was nothing. It was just hip hop and and booty music and reggae and and a mix of reggaeton. And that's it. So obviously, because it was also so young, um, we had a lot of fucking fights. A lot, a lot, a lot of fights. So I started, <clears throat> I started at the club as um, just a bouncer. Quickly became head bouncer, which is basically the side. You know, the, the main sidekick to the to the head of security. Then I became head of security. And from there on, I would do promotion sometimes too uh, on uh, certain days. I forgot what it was. Tuesday was a random day for a different college night. And um, so, we, you know, we, I, I had to deal with the bulk of that fucking bullshit, the mayhem, the fights. And it was it was bad ones. It was bad ones. It was arrests and jumpings. You know, there yeah. was gangs, you know, more gangs back then. Um, yeah, there really was, man. We could go down a quick three or four songs that – when you before you were gonna play it, you would tell the, uh, you would tell the bouncers, "Hey 100%. Wes, you, you get my attention, Wes, Wes, tell your bouncers get ready. We're gonna play that those three songs. That oh shit, here we go. I, forget, I remember C Murder. Yo, that was one. And N- then the, knock if you buck. Knock if you buck. Was Oof, another one. That's that was that a, was a fight waiting to happen. It was a mandatory yeah. fight. It was like, where's it coming from? And Bone Crusher never scared. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, they'll slam dance to that until somebody gets pissed off and then boom, there goes a fight, man. Well, shit, man. Kinda, I don't know. I think the viewers can see it on the camera, but I'm not sure. You know, you weren't there because this happened during a, a different night that you weren't DJing, but you know, I got split with a bottle. Was it on a Sunday? I remember yeah, it was Sundays, on a Sunday. Sundays, Sundays, Sundays was, was tough. super, super hood night yeah. is what it was, man. That's when I used to hang out with Trick Daddy. Shout out to Trick Daddy. He used to come around and fucking shoot dice at uh, Banana Joe's and... um. They used to get wild, but yeah, man, I got I got hit with a bottle on no, but it wasn't on a Sunday. It wasn't on a Sunday. No, 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 no. It was a it was a one of our regular nights. Some dickhead. So who was who was the young brother, black brother who used to um, he was he was he. I don't even think he spun that much. Here and there he spun a little bit, but he was mainly like it was he was your sidekick. He used to help you bring the stuff, and he was your main dude. Dark skin brother, a little bit short. Uh, I had Polly. Which at that time he was going by seduction, and then I had another guy named uh, Juan Fonseca, named Speed, but he was skinnier. Damn man, well man, then I'm just I can't recollect it well enough, but I know he was part of the Part 96 clique. You know when you guys would do certain shows over there, and he would come with somebody, and you weren't Power 96 affiliated just yet. But when they came in, you guys always knew each other. You guys, you know, I don't know if you were well, you were at that time. There was kind of like a little beef, which was um, it was ran by Sean Shanazi. When he did Banana Joe's. Yes. And Sean did Power 96. So it was Power 96 downstairs and it was us upstairs. That's right. That's how it went. You're right. Well, it was one of those dudes. And uh, he was about to get in the fight and I split the fight up. So, man, you know, I told him, this is like the third time you almost get in the fight. I don't care who you, Power 96 you're with or whatever. I'm not going to let you in here. You do this shit again. And sure enough, I, uh, you know, he walked away. I made sure he walked downstairs. And I looked at the dude that he was about to squab with and his ladies in front of him, like, you know, hey, chill, 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 you know, just stay calm, babe, stay calm. 
I'm, I'm, I got my long sleeve. I'm in my dress pants. I'm dressed manager night, you know? And, and I walked up to the dude, crossed my hands in front of me, like, you know, all passive, and said, what seems to be the problem? Bro, I couldn't even finish my sentence. And that man swung a fucking Corona. And, I swear, and I'm not just saying Corona just to say because of what we're going through. Motherfucker hit me with that coronavirus right over my head. Boom. I had 11 stitches on the top of my forehead. I had 41 just on this right here. Jesus. 41. That because it was three layers deep. And I had to get plastic surgery. And hey, man, good times. <laughs> there was definitely a lot of good times, though. But so anyhow, when did you really start making the breakthrough? Once, once you guys got in with us, that's when you really started popping off? Yeah, we started there. And then um, after that, after the whole Banana Joes and Margaret and Mamas kind of fell through after that, we started doing space. Now, who, anybody listening, if you've never heard of Club Space in Miami, you, you probably need to jump out some window because Club Space has been one of, if not the most famous club in Miami, and it's still up and running, right? Or I don't know after the virus, but probably the long, longest lasting one next to what? Man, I have no idea. What other club has lasted? None. Space. Closer. It might be Clevelander. Yeah, but that was never really a club. It never just club it's until. becoming clubbing now. Nah, so, yeah. but no club, no. Club space goes to like eight in the morning too. Nah, no, it, 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 <laughs> they would start. You have people who are like, "Yo, I'm gonna go take a nap." That's like I'm crack like, it's ten o'clock. What do you mean? You calling it a night? No, I'm gonna take a nap till about three or four. I'm gonna get up and then I'm gonna go to club space at five. Swear to God on everything I love, bro. Like 12, 1, 2, depending on who These are pill do. poppers, you know? Yeah, they yeah. straight up ravers, you know? And, you know I mean, I didn't say that you did. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's what they do. I don't know. That's crazy now. But uh, anyhow, so you started spinning that space as well. Started spinning that space. It was me, GQ, and um, After Hours was run by uh, Radimus. And then <clears throat> we would DJ from 11 to about 6 in the morning. Radimus would come in at 6. And it'd take it on to whatever time he would finish. And then I mean, but you you did the hip hop room though. We so did the room. so uh, when we did space, it was you would walk in, and on the left hand side it was a red room, and it was a small little hip hop room. And that was that was yours. That was ours. And then you know they had the the techno room, and then they had the house upstairs. How's it been for you to be in the music industry and to see it? Because you're <clears> deeper <throat> into it. To see a transition the way it has from, and I, I can't even say the amount of names that they have from dubstep to trip dub, dub the fuck what? I don't know, all those names. Man, I just see music just goes in circles because everything always comes back. Because in our days, hip hop was huge. Then hip hop took a dive. Then, you know, you had the, the house scene blew up. House scene died. Hip hop came back up. Did you go with the house scene? Were you, were you, were you turning your hip-hop music into house flavor? So I had a lot of remixes that I used to do. Um, there was at one point when I was working at, um, what's this place called? Um, right here in uh, Bayside, off the hookah. Oh, okay. So okay. off the hookah, I used to do a lot of uh, EDM hip-hop remixes. <clears throat> you know, I didn't make any, but I used to download them, and people loved them. And, you know, I always I always in integrated everything. I, I call myself like open format party rocker. So, you know, I could play Spanish. I could play hip hop. I could play a country song. You know, I go with what the people like. You know, I don't ever go to a club and be like, all right, you know what, tonight I'm going to do this, this, and that. I just see what the people are vibing to. And my, my key thing is I look for girls. Look for girls. No, no, but did that, did that start occurring as the music started changing and you were going with it? Yeah. And that's when that started coming out of you? Of hey, course. let me let me evolve and go with it. and. Course. Evolve or perish, bro. That's right. And then, of course, you like you when you just left like off, that. evolve or perish. That's that's that is a strong line. And where you left off, you were paying attention to where the girls were digging. Exactly. Because sex sells, and everybody's gonna follow where the chicks exactly. go. You know, you could always play for the guys, but you know, the, the goal is you play for the girls. You know, and the guys will come, and everything falls in place. And when you say guys come, you got to be more specific than that because that <laughs> sounds pretty. I mean, this is the black sheep perspective, and we've been known to say worse. So. It means when the guys come over, you know. <laughs> um, tell me, tell me some of the uh, most memorable moments in this, you know, DJ career that you've had. I know you've met many, many different stars, celebrities, either whether they're fans of music or actual, you know, musicians and artists. You know, when, when, when was it that you? I mean, you might be one of those guys who don't get uh, become a fanboy, but we all got somebody who's like, yo, that that dude right there, he was fucking, he was the real one, you know, like. Who would you, who would you, uh, um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a real fanboy, like you said, you know, it's, um, the, the, I would say the perspective that I got is I've been able to travel as much as I can and, and, and enjoy it and get paid for it. 
That's dope. So where have you traveled? Give us give us some spots. Uh, I remember when when MySpace started, um, some guy out of Colombia hit me up to go to Medellin, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go. And then I was like, hold up, <laughs> I'm gonna die, I'm gonna fucking die, bro. <laughs> So I was like, man, I'm scared. I'm, you know, like you, you hear all the stories of Pablo yeah, Escobar. And back then it was <clears throat> back then it was hot. And I had a homeboy that used to DJ, and then he ended up going to the army, and he had gone before me, and I hit him up, and I was like, yo, he's like, bro, it's super safe, it's super dope. So I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna go do it. I went, and I fell in love, man, just with the culture, the people, the atmosphere. It's just, it's just. How uh, long were you there for? Um, I would usually go for a couple of days. Oh, so this was this became. Often, yeah, yeah, so you know, I used to go maybe once, once or twice a year. So, I mean, you know, obviously, we stopped now, but I was going almost four or five times a year now. Sweet, and this is just a guest perform at some dope club, different, or is it are these events different clubs? Different clubs, different clubs. Usually, it'll be one club one day, another club another day. Sometimes it'll be a whole club working two or three days. You know, we just split it up, and then that's it. And do you, when you, I know that I don't know a whole lot about the DJ scene. I, I did. I had a grasp until, you know, what we just discussed. Do you guys try to travel in twos so, because one relieves the other? Or is that just something that promoters put together based upon, hey, we, we you know you're coming, by the way, we're also going to have so-and-so and so-and-so spinning. And In that sense, it's more like a label. So let's say, for instance, we got David Guetta on this label, right? And this club wants to book David. So what I would do is as a manager, all right, cool. I'll let you book David, but you got to book these two guys before we get David. So that's what a lot of labels do when you see two or three DJs um, one at once. And that's, so that's just a company looking out for its own. Exactly. And somehow that company who hires them has exactly. to bite the bullet. They exactly. got to find a way to make that so, happen. Since I fly solo, you know, I try to do all the bookings myself. Or, for instance, if I'm booked, I have a crew of friends that are like, yo, I can't make it. Can you do it? You can't do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? No. And we try to share the work within each other. And when is when is when does the work become a little overwhelming? Have you have you gotten to a point where it's like, man, I, I need to take a you know break from this, whether it's the travel or just the consistent nightlife, because that shit can wear you down. Honestly, like when I first started, I was actually um I was uh I was working at Best Buy, so I would work, go to go to go to uh, go to school. At, I was going to school at that time, so there was no sleeping for me. Mm. So it was work, school, work, school, and then. It got to a point where I, I was financially stable enough, and um, I told my wife at that time, I was like, listen, I'm going to take this serious. And she's like, all right, cool. But just know, if the money doesn't come in, you got to go get a job. So, you know, ever since then, I just... You still with her? You're still with her. Shout out to that wife. <laughs> That's good. You know, you, you need a good woman to... Yeah. Get your reality check, but do it in a supporting way. Like, I'm, exactly. I'm with this, baby, but understand, if it don't make money, it don't make sense. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we got to feed a family. And back then, you didn't have a kid yet. No kids yet. And right now, you have? God, I got three kids. I got a six-year-old. You need to DJ a little bit more, bro. Stop <laughs> stop making kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> Six, four, and? And a year and a half. <laughs> man, that's tough during quarantine, bro. Yeah. You seen that meme? <laughs> meme with the black guy? Or they said, uh, you've seen it. Come on, it's famous right. right now. It goes, the guy, black guy's being interviewed. <laughs> Dude looks smooth. He's all, you know, looking at B, the camera. B, 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 B. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's looking at the camera. Go ahead. And you hear you hear a voice in the background. The voice goes, okay, if you had to choose between oh, yeah. A or B, A, you got to spend, you know, uh, the, quarant the whole time with the quarantine with your wife and kids. Or B, B. <laughs> <laughs> B, no, he gives him a look like, no, motherfucker, for real. B, nothing, you know, yeah. wife and kids, and that messed me. Three kids, all young. Woo! Yeah, running around the house. You got, a bunch, you got a bungee cord on them or what? Like, how do you handle that? Yeah, man, it's, it's not easy. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. A little bit of, little bit of rum? <laughs> Either in their cup or yours. Yeah, sure, <laughs> Somebody got to lighten up. <laughs> it's like sometimes just open the sliding doors, like, you'll play outside. Bro, you, you know what's funny, man? Getting to my age and having friends like you and, and, and others who have kids and, and, you know, seeing every story and being part of it, being part of upbringing, you know, I'm an I'm a uncle to many kids, you know, with the close friends that I have and then, of course, my real niece. Um, you, you, you start to reflect of when you're younger, you know, not even your age, younger than you, Gus, you know, when you, when you were uh, 10 and on, 10 and on, you know, 10, 13 and on, you start thinking, damn, bro. What the hell were my parents doing when, you know, because I got two other brothers and I know one brother was this and one, my younger brother was that and I was like, 
fuck, that's, that's hard, man. That's, and I, and I, was, I just started thinking about the relationships I had and when I would kick it with one, my dad or with my mom or how they would, you know, just function on a day-to-day basis. And, you, and then you, you, you fast forward and you see these, you know, you see you guys and it's like, here you got the one-year-old in one hand, the, the, the three-year-olds running around, the six-year-olds on a fucking game machine yeah. and you got a beer in your hand while sitting with your feet in the pool. And that's just life, man. And that's just, and you got about an hour before you start getting ready to go to go work and go to spin. Exactly. You know, like I mean, I've been lucky that you know I picked the career that I did, and um, I was able to raise each of my kids to about two years old, and then send them to daycare. You know, and that's where they learned the fundamentals and and everything else. But you know, I was blessed, and I know a lot of parents that wish they could have that opportunity. Right. 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 And still to this day, you know, you know, now now we're going through a little quarantine. Who they with? They with daddy. Well, that's good. you know what you said it right, man. You, you've been blessed. I, I think one of the one of the most fearful things, or one of the saddest things about the situation we're in, is parents who are going through this unexpected ordeal. Because luckily, you're stay home. I mean, yeah, you could be doing more gigs at, at Power ninety six, but at least you got a balance going on with your wife, and and you still, you guys are both still working. That's exactly. not very very heard of. So for a lot of these people, they got to feed these kids take care of them. I mean, there's a lot to do and not getting paid and not having other facilities to help you. That's tough, man. A hundred percent, you know, especially for the single parents. My, my, my heart goes out to them. Yeah, man. Shout out to them. And you actually mentioned them earlier when, when you first got yeah. here and we were talking um, before we put the cameras on. Um, big shout out to single parents who are, you know, to all parents, all parents who are definitely doing their thing and, and, and toughing this one out. But my, my heart goes out to them and, you know, especially from a financial standpoint, I fucking, Another meme that's out there that's very popular, but I I looked at my phone today, and I was I was about to send my uh, my rent, <laughs> bro. And I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. Like it's that moment, it's that moment. Like it's it's one of those crazy moments of like, do I hold my ground? What am I supposed to do? Because nine out of ten people would tell me, or maybe eight at least would tell me, no, bro, fuck that. It's more important to keep your money, but 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 but. This lady has to pay a mortgage too. This isn't the bank. And if it was the bank, I'd say fucking lick my ass crack. I ain't paying you shit. Come get me. You know, kick me out if you can. They can't. This is another human being who's going through the same stuff. I don't care if she's a little bit more well off than I am because she's got properties. She has to pay mortgages and stuff. So I sat there and I stared at my phone. I put the money on the, the what's it called, uh, Venmo, and I sent it. And right after I sent it, I went to my text. I'm like, now what do I tell her? And I'm like, all right. And I just said, hey, Hey, uh, bleep, you know, I, I sent you, um, I just sent you the rent. Um, needless to say, we, we do understand the dire situation that we're all facing right now. I'm not, um, uh, I'm not feeling confident about what, what we're going to have, what we're going to do about next month's rent because I don't think I can afford it. It's just not a wise move. Um, I'm sure you understand and, and I know, and I understand that you got to pay a mortgage too. And I hope that the bank can help alleviate all this for, for all of us. Meaning I'm telling her, hey, I hope the bank tells you, chill out, you, 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 you're safe for the next two months so that you can pass that on to me. Because if not, exactly. I'm sorry, you're getting fucked because I can't afford. I can't afford, but it's, I won't make that decision. It would be very unwise. It will drain my account yeah. more than what it should. You know, I can, I can owe you. That's fine. We can come up with a system once this is over. But that money is way more important. So I definitely feel for the people out there, man. You know, when it comes to these single parents and, and rent and food and the kids and taking care of them it's like fuck you know you do you go through some stressful times yeah, you know fucking uh adesanya was talking about some of you guys, adesanya is i don't know if you watch uh do you watch mma do you watch ufc no that's why you got those gray hairs you gotta relax some man <laughs> kick back and watch some shit well you're always spinning when when ufc events are on though that's that's yeah. also that that's one of your main times when do you um when do you spin? what's your average time now i know you say it mixes up so but. i'm usually um every friday and saturday you know working 100 percent it just depending on the day i try to not stay in one venue i try to move around uh weekly um i'm at the clevelander so the, the schedule always changes just depending on this like i was telling you the season All right so for instance if it's spring break you know we're open from 12 p.m to to, to 5 a.m and then between the djs we just rotate and so anybody listening i can tell them if you come to south florida much less miami we got three of the most popular stations if not four you got Power 96, you got 99 Jams, and you got Y100. Those are our top three. Now, we got some other big dogs, 103.5 and all that, but they've been mixing it up a lot. They they bounce around. I do love 93.5, by the way. Uh, Old school hip-hop? No, that's 92.7. Sorry about that. What's going on, crazy world? 
we are definitely going through some shit right now with this here coronavirus and all the madness going on with the elections and everything else involved. But hey, on a brighter note, you got the Black Sheep Perspective to help you get by and get through it. So I really appreciate for you guys tuning in. Thank you for all the love and support. We can't keep, we can't get enough of giving you guys great content. But in order to do that, we got sponsors to help us pay the bills. We got sponsors to help me have a life where I can go ahead and produce this. And I want to give a big shout out to them right now, to the driver shop, High Performance. These guys really did a great, 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 magnificent rap job on my truck. If you guys got a vehicle out there that you want to get a beautiful rap on, you got a paint job rap, you can just wrap your own logos, you can wrap any kind of advertisement. These people are the ones to go to. So Hector and company over there at the Driver Shop High Performance, thank you so much for making my truck look that much more beautiful. Huge shout out to the Using Seed for giving me this meal preps that I really need in my life. If, if you know you're pretty busy in life and there's other things that you want to do but you can't because you put in too much effort to taking care of yourself by eating healthy and prepping meals, well, why don't you give the Using Seed a chance? These guys got great prices and even more important, they put out awesome, dope quality food. And then a huge shout out to Game Time Management. These people have really had my back since day one. They're helping me in the podcast and everything else that I'm going through with trying to project myself in a better place in this world and in the business world. And I definitely couldn't do it with them. So Game Time Management, if you guys need help in your corner, if you're trying to make moves in your life and you need somebody to help you get there, why don't you give Game Time Management a ring? Thank you for supporting us, guys. Stay in tune. We got so many big things coming up, and I hope that you guys are there for the whole journey. Let's get back to the podcast. And then, so what about when you started making these, these, um, you used to make the CDs. Obviously, you, maybe you started with cassettes, but that was before I, I knew you. Actually, um, I was in elementary school when it was like the cassette area. So by the time I got into like the actual DJing with the vinyl and all that stuff, you know, the computer started coming out. So I got the CDs and at that time GQ had a duplication company. And, um, I was like, fuck it, man. I just need to do something. I'm fucking bored. You know, I ain't got nothing to do. So I was like, let me record. So I would record my mixes and then I'll go to GQ's house and print them out and and then go to the clubs and just start passing them out to everybody. And then, you know, I did one and then I, people were like, no, let me get another one. Let me get another one. Let me get another one. So at that time I was just pushing them out left and right. I remember. I definitely remember. Um, you were You were one of the hottest DJs at that time. I don't know if I can remember the other ones. I know that D'Angelo was, Reflex was making some noise. I don't know if he was like right beneath you or alongside with you or that was after you. I'm not sure. Shout out to Reflex. Um, I can't remember the other people. I don't know. I don't know. You would know those names, but at those times, up and coming DJs, you no, know. At, the, at that time, it was, you know, you had Obscene that was starting That's off. right. That's right. Obscene, yes. I remember Obscene. Uh, who else was in that, around that area? Um, EFX. Um, Power 96 had his guides already. You know, it, it had Def. It had Def. It had Def. It had, Def, um, it had Zog. It had Zog. Gregorio. Um, yeah, Gregorio as well. Who else was there at that time that I remember? Uh, Tony Tone. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Tony Tone. Tony Tone was around that era. Um, and there were so many. It's been so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> and and then, so what? So did, when did you get to do some great opening acts in this you know career of yours? Um, or? So, you know, I've done a lot of Latin stuff. I don't know why. You know, I've never been a person that was, like, associated with, with you know, the Latino side. It just kind of, like, it called me. Like, it grabbed me and it took me under its wing. You know, at one time I was working for um, at 90 Degrees. And around there, man, I met Tego, Don Omar, Zion Lennox. I mean, there was a bunch of acts. And, you know, he's the one that's doing Ozuno now, Romeo Santos. I remember when Tego performed at our club. Yeah. I believe you were there. That was one of our biggest nights. He yeah. smoked with everybody in the back room. Yeah. yeah man. <laughs> Dago, man. Shout out to him. He's he's a real one. Um, what's him call it? Had performed over there, too. Um, Nikki. Yeah. Nikki Jam. Um, Speaking of Nikki, um, you know, because of the coronavirus, I was about to do a concert with him um, the Saturday before everything went really went crazy. Yeah. So I have, um, you know, because I kept my, my Colombian connections, um, one of my one of my boys out there, he's actually um, Carol G's DJ, and he had hit me up and he's like, "Yo, um, you know so and so from from Medellin?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." We hung out when I was over there a while back, and he was like, "Yeah, well, well, he's Nicky Jam's DJ, and they're looking for, for somebody to fill him in because he can't do a concert." Oh man! So we were supposed to do that, and then there was supposed to be another event in New York that, that nobody could do, so they were gonna have me do it. So it would have been a good, nice little. Nice little plug. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Damn. Corona strikes again. Yeah, 
Yeah, but shit happens, bro. I keep yeah. hearing that damn Cardi B. I don't know if she did that on purpose or if she bro, knew blew, if she knew it was gonna up. blow up like that or what. But fuck, man. Especially when Caballo. Every time I see Caballo post something, he keeps reminding me what I keep hearing. He's like, I keep hearing Cardi B's. Yeah. And, and now he's got me thinking about it even more, bro. Like 100. percent A sound bite. <laughs> just that, when she yeah. was becoming irrelevant, she just became relevant again. That's true. That's true. She she better try to ride that weight, bro. I saw a video. Oh God, it's so disgusting, bro. I saw a video. I don't. I don't follow these people. Chaos. I don't fucking. I give three shits if their music's good. I caught it by luck on some radio station because I never listened to the radio. Somebody got to present it to me. I just caught on to uh, what's the, what's the one that I told you that I like? That it's like six months old with um Black Eyed Peas. Oh, Ritmo. 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 I didn't know about that. And that's just already like seven, eight months old. I just caught on like a month ago, but um. I saw a video when she's talking to the camera, and those nails, <laughs> it just don't make sense, man. They're super long. It just, it just, it really does not make sense. It, I don't know what somebody would find attractive about that, because I know that every one of us, from kid to now, from, from kid to adult horror movies, only thing we can connect to those long ass nails is, is horror. It's Freddy Krueger. It's fucking pterodactyls. <laughs> it's, it's goddamn dinosaurs. It's, it's nothing good. It's nothing good. But these bitches do that shit. Whoever it is that does it, they do it. And she's a she's a multi stupid yeah. millionaire. What do you get from that? Like that shit looks. Speaking about that, shout out to my natural girls, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to them for real. Keeping it not. There's too much fake booty going around yeah. there. Chaos. Fake booty, fake titties. The fake titties stomach. is acceptable by now, but yeah, but the stomachs, everybody's fake getting eyebrows, tough. Fake, oh, fake eyelashes, fake. Wow, it's like, what do you tell them, dog? We we just we just I don't know if you got a chance to see the uh, the podcast that we did. We, I just went um we just posted it yesterday with um the coffee club. I'm sorry, <laughs> the coffee breakup. Uh, two homeboys, uh, Marvin and and Chris. Great segment. There, the coffee breakup. There's a podcast of theirs that um they just discuss relationship issues of all sorts. Would you do this? Have you done that? Long distance relationship. Fuck them in the booty. Whatever it is, it's all oh. there. And it's, and, it, and they're good, bro. They're good, and it's, it's a good podcast. I believe in them, and shout-outs to them. Um, we had a great conversation, and, and one of them was about the makeup, how these you know chicks get so made up, and it was also about um, they put so much money into these outfits and these purses, and men don't give three fucks. No, really don't. We, as long as you're matching orange, orange purse, white, green, orange. The, oh, that shit, that shit looks fly. That's cute. You look good, girl. You know, my whole thing for, with, with, with my wife was always, you know, I got lucky with her. One, two is I got to have somebody I can have a conversation with. Also, right? Because yeah. if you can't communicate, you can't talk, then it's like, you know, what are you, what are you around for? Right, 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 right. That you shit know, runs dry real quick. Well, people don't know, man. For, for me, one of the hardest things in my life is, is, is being married. You know, especially in my, in my line of work. You know, I'm out every weekend. There's alcohol. There's drugs. There's women. But I know that when I get home, I got a good one waiting for me. That's great, man. That's that. And that's not the type of shit you hear often at all. So shout out to your wife. I, I can't wait till she hears this and she can see that you know you're keeping it real over here on on the on the podcast. And that's I don't know if you're doing that because she's got a little ticking time bomb attached to your nut. But <laughs> if, if not, then that's well deserving. And shout out to her. You know that that kind of reminds me. And I know I, I probably name drop my mom every podcast. She's one of those rare breeds. You know, amazing women who who. Does it all right, you know, great mother, great wife, all that good stuff. So yeah. uh, they exist, same way great men exist, you know. So if you're a great man, you keep it real with her and to be giving her a shout out, you know, props to you too because a lot of dudes in your line of work would be slaying shit left and right and, and have no remorse. And it's the truth. It's, yeah. it's difficult to say fucking no to. There's groupies for every position in a club. The fucking bar back can get pussy by letting in a couple of girls free. <laughs> yeah. He'll go to, he'll, bro, bar back will go to the bouncer in the front, the, the doorman, and say, hey, I'll bring you Red Bull whenever the fuck you want. And if you want me to mix alcohol in it, I got you. But if I ask you to hook up my homegirls when they come, please look out. Got you, got you. Now these homegirls are like, oh, my God, fucking yeah. bar, back, bar back Bob can let me into the hottest <laughs> club whenever. Bob. And, of course, I'm going to give him some pussy. And, and that's what happens. <laughs> so imagine, you know, when you're a DJ, you know, or – my decent looking, you know, head of security, you know. <laughs> that shit gets thrown at you, bro. You gotta be like, shit. Oh, I remember I remember looking at Wes. And I'm here DJing, look at him, and I see some people some people like touching their toes in front of him. Like, what are they doing over there? <laughs> touching their toes. 
<laughs> what do you mean? When they used to dance in front of you, bro. Oh, oh man. man. You yo, talking about that? Yo, Gus, let me tell you something, bro. Girls yeah. used to throw themselves at, at West, bro. Throw themselves. It was it was a wild time. You now you know the story I told you about when we talked or yeah. like a couple of days ago. Look, man, for whatever it's worth, they were younger. You know, they're now 18, 19, 20, 21. And you know, here I am, 30, I think, or whatever, 27, 28. And for a minute, I was the only bouncer in Miami. I remember because back then they made a page over it. They made a fucking MySpace page or whatever with glasses on. So these chicks would talk. I didn't know until some chick came up at the front of the line. I'm over here helping out. It's just, again, every night was always like you thought somebody was performing. It was just bananas. And I would go out there to help and this and that and get on some promoter's ass for letting in some underage chick or whatever. And this chick comes up to me, say, hey, did you know that you got number one for the second month in a row? I'm like, what? I'm like, listen, you're not getting in. That's the promoter. Whatever. No, no, for real. And then pull, pulls out some shit and tells me, look, and shows me some picture on her flip phone of whatever the fuck, her razor, <laughs> her, her razor phone. And um, yeah, had a site that was dedicated to like good looking bouncers and all that stuff. And I won like two months in a row. It was stupid, dog. It was stupid. But you can imagine the kind of attention that brought me. So we had a lot of fun times. That's it. <laughs> we were a lot of, it, was, it was, bro, the nightlife takes its toll. You didn't keep anything from that time? Nah, nah, nah. Memories. Memories. Right. Nothing Memories. else? Nah, nah. Anything else got got chlorified. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, man. I mean, there was there was a lot of wild nights, a lot of wild shit, a lot of wild stories. It, it comes with the territory. Yeah. It just does. Chaos. You've been in a DJ booth, and you've seen some of the wildest fights. You've seen people fucking on the floor. Yeah. You've seen some girl jump from one guy to the next guy. You've seen a pit pocket rape everybody for their wallet. You know what I mean? You see, you Because you up there. And when you're spinning and you get a break or you're just spinning and you're connecting with the crowd and you need a whoop to whoop, you see shit that other people don't. So 100 percent bro. I see that. I see everything, man. The experiences that you've had. Luckily you had a white to hold you down, focus, yeah. you know? I don't know what Kawaii was saying. The, the caiga la pinka. <laughs> <laughs> real. You follow Kawaii? Oh, of course, man. Oh yeah. man, that dude is something else, bro. Something else. He putting that put that video up with the uh that song that he did. He got chicks dancing in and everything, bro. In his in his green room, it's, it's hilarious. The funniest is his brother <clears throat> dancing with him. His brother, yeah. yeah. I just started following. You know what's his funny that, that I saw that and I actually hit him up and I was like, "Listen, bro, you need to come out with something original, so you can actually make money off of it." Bro. Yeah, track, yeah, bro. yeah. You know, stop using fucking. Don't use a DMX track. Use your own track. If you want, I'll help you produce it. Let's do it. And he hit me up. And he was like, "Yo, let's get together." That's fucking phenomenal, bro. So I can't speak for anybody, <clears throat> but I know that. Our click, when I say our click, I'm, I'm going to say in, in an umbrella, game time, game time, game time management, and, and everybody that's Gus, myself, Yuli the Monster, Sergio, um, Bean from Bean Shop, uh, Too Nice, um, anybody else who I'm, who I'm nice. missing out. Yeah, Too Nice, man, my dude, bro, that motherfucker got a lot of shit he's going to Did you see do, the man. video he posted? He's killing me, bro. That kid, that kid does a lot, man. That yo, he's no, got the he, one that his girls wrapped. Yeah, in. Yo, I fucking love that, it. That he's comical as fuck, dude. That had me dying. He's a charismatic dude. You seen bro. that video? No, I haven't seen it. No, he just put it out this morning or last night. I forgot. <laughs> I'm gonna search it really quick. Yeah, I, I, I'm assuming it's his lady. His lady's got him scissored, <laughs> like face going red, like he's really choking and shit. And he's asking. <laughs> he says, "This is day five on quarantine with your girl." Watch, watch. Yeah. I'm gonna put it. He's gonna put it on. Um, but uh. Anyhow, so yeah, so you know that's our main our main peoples, and under the game time management group, and and uh, after we did the thing with Caballo, you know I fell in love with that fool. You know I'm like, dude, you're, look, there, here we go. We're gonna watch this quick video of Too Nice on Instagram. Can we hear it? Yeah. I can't breathe, babe. <laughs> baby, I can't breathe. Open. Ah. <laughs> I can't breathe. She got them thighs on. <laughs> no, but did you see the one that Kawaii just put with the spinning thing? Yeah. Kawaii made that. his own, like, you know, like a, como se dice? Like, like you spin for something, you know? Like if you're spinning to to do it, it's your turn, you spin. The spin the bottle type thing? Oh, uh -huh. he made he made a little spinner, but. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Sorry, and it, and it's, it's forced, <laughs> it's forced to fall. There's no way it's going to stand up. Like he's got it leaning up. And it's forced to go into the option that says, uh, una paja. 
<laughs> so, oh, guess I'm going to jack my dick again. <laughs> this fucking guy. But anyhow, yeah, back to Caballo. So, you know, I told him, I said, Caballo, do you have a manager? And he's like, nah, bro, I'm my own manager. I mean, I, I, I was thinking about fucking with somebody, but it didn't, it didn't go good. And, and then, you know, he was openly telling me, you know, oh, a lot of snakes out there, they just want your attention, but they don't put in the work. Nobody, nobody's going to work like you work for yourself. We say that yep. all the time. Yep. And he's right. But then I said, look, dude, it's going to look like I'm plugging game time because I'm with them. It's not that. It's like these dudes are my brothers. These people are the real ones. Maybe when you hit big, everybody gets a little, who knows? It happens. But they ain't there yet. So the love is real. The bond is a real friendship. It's a brotherhood that started with three guys who were originally best friends. So we're just trying to get the right people who can get that type of guidance and will fit perfect to that type of family. And, man, I told Kawhi, I said, dog, do me a favor. We're doing something for Yuli tonight. It's his birthday. It's a surprise party. I would love for you to come. Everybody's going to be there. I want you to meet the group. Blah, 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 blah. Let's start Let's start slowly working on some type of collab, man, some guidance, some management, some this, some that. So, you know, he was all for it, and he went. We had a great time, and he met everybody, and we exchanged numbers, and, you know, there's collaboration in the making. But to hear you say what you just said, I completely agree, bro. I completely agree. It's great that he did that, but you're right. He should do his own. Yeah. You got to help produce it. You know, nowadays it's, it's you know, what can you do? And you got to make money off of it, bro. You know, you got people that are trying to make music and then pushing it on YouTube. And it's like, all right, cool. You're doing that. How are you going to monetize off of it? Right. Same thing. What are you guys doing? You're doing your podcast to eventually monetize off of the off of the views, off of the you know exactly. sponsorship. Right. You know, at the end of the day, bro, we got to eat. Excuse me. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're all putting in time and effort. Exactly. You're talking about. I mean, from beginning to end, I think when I text you, we were talking about the podcast. I said, hey, man, at, at minimum, it's going to go three hours. That doesn't mean we recorded the whole three, but at minimum, you coming in, the this, settling down, boom, 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 everything. So if, if this is on a consistent basis, which is three to four, and then Gus has to do his leg work, I got to do my computer work, and shout out to my, my video editor, Doug. He has to do the most work. Man, three, All this shit. turns into like 15 hours. Exactly. And we didn't make a single penny. Yeah. We're just hoping to get a lot of views so that we can accumulate those pennies. So you're you're 100 percent right, and and time is money. We all here. It's cliche, but it's accurate. It's accurate. It's like you know, passion, I, prosper, success. 100%. There you go. When I started DJing, I wasn't making a dollar. You know, at one point I was making seventy five dollars a night DJing a whole night, Damn. right right on South Beach. You know, I was the first club I ever DJed at. I remember it was a Union Lounge. That's when I met Big Mike. I was making seventy five dollars a whole night. Do they still ever pay DJs that, or has, has that game changed? I like, like fighters up, used to get paid crap. Now they get paid a lot got, better. It's gone up. It's gone up. Um, it, it got to a point where it went up, and then quickly went back down because you know the the market got saturated. You know, once the computer came out and everybody's a DJ now. Right. So you know, I don't. I try not to DJ as much, but I make what I do count. I don't know if that makes sense. Of course, but but so when you don't DJ as much, you mean like the the private gigs? No. No, I take private gigs all day. You okay, know, so as long you, as the money's right, I'm there. So what is it? Let, let's go a little bit deeper into into Power ninety six. Okay, so you got with them. I remember that you won. So it, I won a I won a DJ competition about right. about four years ago um, at the Clevelander, and uh, you know I just did it for shits and giggles. I was like, fuck it, bro. I ain't got nothing to do, nothing to lose. But before that, I kept on thinking, bro, I need to be on radio. I want to be on radio. I'm gonna be on radio. I'm gonna be on radio, and. The contest came around, and I was like, fuck it. I submitted. I was like, cool, I'm in it. Then I went and I competed, and it went well. You know, I won, and um, and ever since then, you know, I got, um, I've been doing weekends. You know, the Friday nights, Saturday nights, the, you know, the the times vary, but it was, we were there. I was on the radio. And now you've been, the, you've been with them for over four years now. About four years now, yeah. That's awesome. And, and how has that experience been? Has that taken you to any type of events or places that otherwise you haven't been to? Um, or you know, the, you know, radio really didn't bring money to me. It just meant I met a lot of contacts, which were important contacts. You know, either through an artist or through certain people. You know, just hey, I'm Power, power ninety six. Um, because of Power, I was able to do a radio station in in Medellin, Colombia. Oh, okay. you know, the program director hit me up. He's like, yo, you're part of Part 96. And I actually took him one oh, a few years back when he was in Miami. I showed him around the station, the old station that we had. And, you know, stuff like that. So they gave you a platform. Yeah. You know, they gave you a platform. And that, that's... 100%. <clears throat> I honestly try to do that. That's, you know, Gus and I uh, aspire to do that for people who come in here. Not that they need it, but part of our whole concept is 
we get to talk from a, a course a different perspective than what the norm is used to and we get to get guests who we think are special in their own way and if they do have a message or they do you know they might not be able to be heard or seen in any other fashion because of the way the industry is we can provide that you know and even though it's, it's not big right now it's, it's making noise it's making noise it's getting there you know we've had some really good really really good like, i can't tell you how happy i am with the amount of guests that we've had you know just great guests on all kind of levels you, you're our first dj so that's dope, and I love that you and I got a, a, a fucking pass, you know, that we're going light on. <laughs> he said he sees girls on their toes in front of me. I, I didn't know how to take that. I was like, what'd you do, catch me in the star? What do you mean? <laughs> did, I didn't, that, did that happen? <laughs> let's keep going, man. Chaos is the guest here, bro. Um, <laughs> is that what you were doing during work? What? <laughs> I thought you were a bouncer, not bro, a janitor bro, in the bathroom. Dude, we used to literally have to fucking drag drunk people out of stalls who were just head leaning into the toilet Ew. ass out that is disgusting I, that is not a lie at all and that was not that, once a night it was twice is, a night on disgusting. average bro it how, was how do you control the massive amount of people not being able to drink you know there's 18 year old girls and yep. you know, boom 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 they're so packed you know there's not no matter the amount of bouncers you have, this is just not going to happen. If we, if we catch them, we kick them out. If we this, we that. We find somebody to give them out. But it's still, you're, you're talking about two floors. I don't even know what the square footage was, but it was a good size, you know, place. And top floor being more. And then again, it, it, it used to get so packed that they made the, the outside patio instead of a rest area for people to chill. They turned that fucking thing into the Latin room. So now there was three rooms. And uh, it, it was, you know, it was popping, man. It was popping. So it was very hard to control everything at once. You know, we did have some corrupt bouncers, though, you know. And, and that's when that's how I got promoted and did as good as I did because I was, believe it or not, I talk a lot of shit and I bust a lot of balls. But when it comes to my, my business, I do business correct. Active, bro. You know, I, I handle it correct. We can talk shit about the females and all that. But, hey, man, don't put your hands on anybody if you don't have to. And if you do... We're taking them out. We're not punching people. We're not fighting people. I fired so many assholes for doing I can't stand any bouncer. Nowadays or even back in the days, they just wait for that opportunity to put their hands on somebody. Like, like you got issues. You know what I mean? You got little man complex or whatever the fuck it is, you know? I didn't put up with that. Yeah, so, so I feel like one of the things that, that killed the South Beach era is when you try to go to a club, you know, it's all about the respect and um, the hospitality. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to a place, you're going to spend money. You're going to go have a good time. You know, it got to a point where you go to the club and there was a big line. No, you can come in. No, you can't come in. You come in. You can't come in. And, you know, that shit killed the industry, bro. It did, man. That shit killed that's, the that's, that's crazy that you actually have the right to talk about it because you remember it because it didn't. It was South Beach who did that. Yeah. It was South when South Beach started gaining ground on that popularity tip. And I would say it was like 2000. You think it was more of like what you look like that would let you in? It wasn't no think. We yeah. know. Yeah. We yeah. know that we, there was, there was. I don't want to call it out like that, but there was this big girl who tried to do a lawsuit against um, Cameos, which was super known back then as well. They reopened Cameos, or it was before they shut down, I forgot, but some some girl tried to hit her up, hit them up with a lawsuit because she said that she... Discrimination. Yeah, discrimination against weight and this and that, but they actually defended it on some report, like in a newspaper report, and they said that any any entity... At the time, I don't even know if that changed. That they have the right to choose who they let in or not let in. The yeah. same way a club can say, baggy pants, you can't come in. Yeah, dress codes. That's not discrimination. Yeah, so whenever it happened, they had a way of squirming out of it. But yes, it was infamously known. If you were big, you ain't getting in. If you were nice body but you ugly, you ain't getting yeah. in. If you were a dude, you better have a button down. There is yeah. no, at that time, there was no wearing, no, 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 no. Button Sex down, up. mandatory. And... Depending on the place, the shoes had to match too. Yeah. Like they, you know, they did. I never wear sneakers back then. They were forcing us, bro. Yeah, I miss those days <laughs> to a certain extent. You know, because it's yeah, because it's you wear anything. Yeah, fuck now man. you can go dressed dressed out of bed and go straight to a to For a real. place in Winwood anywhere. That is very true, though. You can go in flip flops. I don't yeah, know, the man. Style, the style's a lot different now, today. That's definitely. A, a big I don't. Thing. I don't want to say, and I know you didn't either. So I'm not putting words in your mouth. I'm not against it. But what the style today? Yeah, I like I like I, that everybody's. I, I like the style more today than I like. I do too. Even though guys take that to another stream by looking like females and doing female shit. Oh no, you're talking about cross dressing. Though. No, I'm just talking about guys who are too fucking um, metrosexual. What do you What do you mean? Their jeans are spandex and tighter than fucking <laughs> a female's real spandex. Like I'm dead ass serious though. 
Come on, you got a couple homeboys who wear that shit. Do you I? know it? Yeah, of course you do. You got some short shorts yourself, bro. Oh, uh, I wear short shorts. It doesn't mean I'm wearing... But you wear tight. short shorts to go out to, like, fucking Bayside, not to go snorkeling. And these, wait, are, wait. these are shorts that you should be in the water with, not nah, fucking walking nah, nah, around nah. with. Now you're just... <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. No. Oh, my God. To everybody following us out there, the next time I catch Gus in some short shorts that he shouldn't be wearing because we're out and about, I'm going to take a picture and post it. <laughs> Mark my words so y'all can see that, okay? Bro, one of my homeboys called you out one time. For real? Yeah, straight up. I forgot who it was. They were like, yo, what's up with your that, That's your co-host, right? I go, yeah, yeah. That's my, you guys close? Yeah, that's my little dude. He grows on me every day. All right, well, then let him grow enough and tell him about those shorts. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Which shorts? The ones I trained with? This the, was a while back. We, I think we had ran into you and some friends somewhere. When we were just getting tighter and you you did the show with me like twice. It was a minute ago. You were with some friends somewhere. You know when you when you you, you get together with your boys, you start acting more like them? Yeah, Yo, you <laughs> It is what it is, man. But <laughs> uh, put me around too many hood dudes and I I might I might let loose a little bit of hood, you know, and, and I don't I don't think that's a good thing, you know, but I might. It's it's just something that happens if if my Spanish, when I speak Spanish, I try to speak proper Spanish. I don't try to come off like some cubana, so it comes here and there. But when you put me around fucking caballo, if me and caballo are hanging out for two, three hours, I'm going to be talking like tremendo asqueroso. <laughs> because that's caballo. That's, what he, that's his thing. That's, that's what he's hilarious with it, but he brings it out of me too, you know? Um, you still keep in contact with any of these DJs, man, from back in the days, like Zog or any of those? Zog, Zog, I, I talk to him every so often because we're always doing little events on the side here and there. But he's with 93.5 now. No, he's on power. He's on power. He's, on power. he's actually got, he has a morning show now with Lucy. Somebody else went to 93.5. Um, um, he was with 96, though. I forgot his name. I can't say it now. It'll pop up to me. But okay, so Zog's with Lucy. You know? They got the morning show on, on the on the radio and... um. I have a crew of DJs that I that I fuck with now, and um, you know, like I said, we sh we all share work. You know, we start off as a friendship, and then you know, that's how it just starts. It starts as a friendship, and then we just throw each other work whenever we can. We can do it. So let's talk about some projects that you got coming up. Now, you you had earlier, right before we started the, the podcast, you started showing me a, a video which was dope because I love the animation on it. Yeah, man. And you 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 just you're doing it with um, what's the artist's name? So let's let's, let's go back a little bit. Um, okay, about five years ago. I start, you know, I had my first kid, and I was like, "Fuck, man, I need to figure out how to make more money. Figure out how to make more money." I got into a to a basketball gym with one of my best friends from from elementary school. So I've been running an indoor basketball gym for the last five years. Shit, dope! I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I've been doing that, and um, it's called Thunderplex. So Where's that at? So, so we just upgraded about two years ago. We, uh, we're on one forty second and one twentieth, right behind the um, right behind the Tamiami Airport. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, the warehouse is over there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So is is this one of those bouncing fucking slam, like, dope shit, or just... Nah, it's, a, it's a full court, you know, we, we have, like, about 170 kids, and we do adult leagues, and we... Oh, do okay, yeah, so dope. dope, dope, dope. You know, we do we do summer camps, we do spring break camps, Um, you know, we try to do everything we can on for the kids, you know? Right. So I had that going, and then at the same time, I was like, fuck, I need to figure out how to make more money, more money. It's never enough. It's never enough. Especially you know? when you got kids popping, bro. yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Fuck, man, I need to dab into the music, man." So, so I've been, I've, I released a couple of tracks, um, you know, testing the waters to see where I'm going and stuff like right, that. Right, right. Um, now I feel like I'm in a position where the only thing I'm missing is money to promote myself. You know, at the end of the day, it's you can do everything, and if you don't have money, you ain't going anywhere. So now I, I've, I've, I've come to the science of, all right, cool, I, I, got, I can work on my projects, and now I know how to how to submit them, where they're gonna go. You know, I have a, have an avenue of what I want to do. Now, when you mentioned, and I don't want to get any to specifics to your private financial business, yeah. but when you mentioned the money part, can you throw me like so that we don't you know, get to the details? Can you throw me a ballpark of what type of money are we talking about when it that it can roughly cost to what I would say what market is it yeah. is this for mar well production and marketing yeah. right? So you, like, know, you know, you know, when you want to release something, you know, at the end of the day, everything is is your name brand, you know. And at least when I do something, I want it, everything has to be fucking spot on perfect when I'm going to release. So, you know, you got to do the production. Um, if you're going to work with the artist, you know, you got to pay for their studio time. Um, you know, it's just time consuming of, of what the, the perspective that what you want to release. Um, <coughs> when I showed you the video, you know, that cost money. I had a guy in Venezuela. That I, you know, obviously a little bit cheaper over there because the, the dollar. Still, that was some dope animation. You know yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you, you know, everything's a cost, and 
now the most important thing, you know, now that I got everything together and, you know, I know what I'm, what I'm going to do, it's how am I going to release it now? You know, what am I going to market to? And that's where the, the, the money comes in, you know, for a song like that, a part of put in about a couple thousand dollars just in marketing, just in marketing, just in marketing. When it's a YouTube ads, it's a Spotify ads, it's, it's hitting up uh, people with social media and be like, yo, how much you want for this, you know, re to release uh, the song on, on, on IG and just to get traction and movement. So you guys would actually, is that, is that a method that, that you think is slightly successful or obviously what the hell do I know what I'm talking about? Is it very successful when you reach out to what? Influencers? Influencers, and, yeah. And offer them? Nowadays, 100%. Really? You don't have influencers, yeah. And and what would be that, that, um key number that you would look for in order to fuck with an influencer like they gotta be at least as many followers um it depends on on what what i'm working on for instance like if i'm gonna do a hip-hop song i'm gonna look for you know uh, if i'm gonna do a hip-hop song and i want to see some ass shaking i'm gonna go hit up a bunch of girl influencers and be like listen i need you to make a video and i'm gonna pay you x amount and then you guys release it you know if i'm gonna do a pop song and i want certain um entities to, to look at it you know you just got to figure out where, where you want to go what's up crazy world you got to be a little loose upstairs if you're following us but if you're not following us what the hell are you waiting for listen go ahead stop what you're doing pause you can come right back to this i want you to subscribe go to youtube i want you to go to itunes i want you to go to soundcloud i want you to just find any platform that we're on follow listen show your love and support thank you very much appreciate you let's get back to the podcast so you would at least like aim for uh, 500,000 followers or better. And then, you know, the numbers have to make sense. Exactly. What you try to do is you try to barter a lot of things, you know? Hmm. So you might want to find somebody who would be willing to barter musical interests of some sort to lower the price versus exactly. some fucking wildlife person who wouldn't make sense, you know? Exactly. Interesting. Damn, there's so much to be to learn out there to be successful. It's like social media definitely gives us an outlet that we've never had. And this is the truth of people can hit levels of success that they've never otherwise could have thought about, I don't know, through whatever other platform, but now they can. Done done right. Done, done right. right. Yeah, done, done right. right. Now, there's a lot of people who think, oh, if I just get this and if I just get that, um, you know, I should be able to make some money. No, no, no. It takes a lot more effort. You, it's one thing to get there. It's like, it's like becoming a champion. I got this little fucking glue thing here. It's like becoming a champion. You know, to, get, to become a champion is, is difficult in itself. To remain the champion, that's the most difficult thing because anybody you go against from here on out is the best. So uh, when, when you hit the, the whatever it is, a certain amount of followers, 500,000 or a million, can you remain relevant? Because in this fast, ever-changing world, you'll quickly become irrelevant. It's like a song nowadays might last two weeks, a month of how fast the, the music business is. Wow. You know, back in the day, the song would last six months, a year. Right, right, now, right. Especially Lil Wayne. I remember when Lollipop was on for freaking a whole year. Lollipop, the uh, Millies. But yeah, you, you put it on and it was still pop. Yeah, without a doubt. It's a good... Lil Wayne was probably one of the few who had so many bangers and you still bring it up. But, um, you know, people don't know that. You know, you got to be in the industry to know it. You got to be in the industry to know that, to know to know those yeah. those loopholes and yeah. how, how much you more being, difficult. My bad. For no, no, go ahead, go ahead. You being a DJ, who's who's one of the people you would say right now, in, in especially in like Miami culture... Is one of the most re relevant artists. You know that's that's hard to say because you know after Pitt, after Rick Ross, there really hasn't been anybody that's made that much noise. You know, um, there's a girl named Mariah Perreito. She has a song named Perreito. You would know it before I do. I have no clue. El yeah. Perreito. El Perreito, yeah. What's Perreito? El Perreito. She has a song. She had a. She has a song. Is that a made up word? No. Per, like perro and then ito. Ah, Perreito. What's a Perreito? Perreito is a dance. Oh. Perreo. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, that I know. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Let's see who else is from Miami. You know? Well, how long ago was that, homegirl? Um, well, not even a year ago. And is she still doing good? She's still good. She's still doing good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I met her. I met her through the radio station. Um, um, you know, you got um Jason Derulo. Right, right. He's from, and you think these are people? You're saying I, I? You think these are people that you think are popular in the music scene in Miami? That people listen to in the clubs and yeah. want to hear this yeah. stuff. And when was the last time you heard Jason Derulo, man? Everybody know Jason Derulo. That's true. But now, but now, but he's just a DJ. No, no but he, he does music. He's, he's a artist. singer. He's an artist. He's an artist. But he's from Miami. He's from Miami. If he's not from Miami, he might be from Broward. 
I'm not mistaken. Okay, South Florida. Because I remember, South Florida. I remember, I remember working at Space with with Cardi, and he used to come around and just just hang out. He, he had a couple of banging hits, man. Yeah. I don't know how many, but I know he had two that were very very popular. He's relevant now more in the <clears throat> dancing stuff. Like he does a lot of videos of him dancing and stuff. Like really? That. Yeah, he's big on the TikTok. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. He's. We, big we were TikTok. talking about TikTok earlier. Have you done TikTok shit I yet? I haven't done TikTok now. <laughs> Bro, enough Fosse, man. It's, not, it's just, you know, we were literally you had a long what? conversation. You know like 20 it's, minutes before you got here, we were talking about fucking TikTok. And like, dude, I'm telling him, and I'm, I don't want to be a hypocrite, so don't fucking judge me out there. I'm telling him, he he's, he's a brand. He is a product. He's a fighter. He's, he's a very, um, there's a big hype behind him coming out from amateur and finally going pro. He trains with a bunch of very known assassins and all that whoop de So I'm like, yo, you a product, you a brand, and you're young. You need to do that. You need to do that TikTok shit. However you got to do it, do it. Make it work. Fix it. Work with your people. There's a lot of people you can work with. Me? <laughs> I can't. I can't even come. I feel retarded just thinking about doing anything. I, I almost blush just seeing myself doing some TikTok shit. It's not my style. Can Can I put some effort into finding a way of getting the Black Sheep logo and doing some TikTok with it or whatever? Sure. And I should, you know, to be more successful, to market myself more. But goddamn... Chaos. I'm not there yet, bro. I'm not there. I mean, the, the first time I heard about TikTok was uh, was a couple of years ago, and that's you know following all these people from Colombia. I seen them doing. I was like, man, all right, okay, cool. And then now, you know, now that everybody's home, now everybody got time. Now everybody's doing it. Right. It's true. It's true, man. I wonder what TikTok. What is this gonna do for them? This, this skyrockets their their skyrockets. skyrockets I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I was very very um. I was go. against it. Against it, I was like, bro, I wouldn't, I wouldn't download this. And it got to a point I was so bored at my house because I would literally train, or I would go somewhere else, or I'm here doing a podcast, and I haven't been able to go anywhere else. I just train, and then that's it. I go home. There's no restaurants open, nothing. So I have, I have no choice. And then I just, I was on Instagram and I saw a TikTok thing, and I was like, man, let me download this, bro. I was on it for like two hours just looking. Yeah, man. I was like, yeah, everybody's Damn. on that. You know? It's like, man, this shit's entertaining. I mean, I, I won't let myself get caught up in that entertainment aspect of it because <clears throat> I'd rather do other stuff with my time. But from a business perspective, it makes sense. You know, how, why would... <clears throat> if someone said, hey, all you got to do is dip dabble, stir some shit up, you know, twice a week, and your business will grow. You'll make more money. You know, you, you you know, you're know, supposed to be funny, considered an idiot for not taking advantage yeah, of that. Funny enough, you know, um, you know, nowadays, you know, program directors for radio stations, they're looking at what's on Spotify. What's hitting? What's on Pandora? What's on TikTok? You know, what are the songs that are actually hitting? You know, um, Shazam. You know, from right now, you can go into Shazam and you can check your local market. What's the top songs being Shazammed? And then people, you know, that's where they get their their their, their references from of what they're going to put on the radio. You know, there's different aspects. What YouTube, you know, how many followers you have, how many comments you have. You know, those are little things that people are looking at. So there's a, there's a whole other equation to to what they look at as successful and, and when they want to, I guess, commit to pushing an album for you or, right. or producing your next song, right. whatever it might be. You know, a, a perfect example is um, <coughs> when, Anuel, when Anuel came out of jail. Anuel? Anuel. Anuel. Reggaetonero. You, you don't know who Anuel is? <laughs> oh, Look, my he's, he's god! He's a Puerto Rican rapper. Um, So he whatever, he went to jail. Came out within two weeks, dropped the album, right? No music video, no nothing. They just dropped an album. Fire album, too. So what they did was they let the, the album ride for a week or two. Then they could see the numbers on what songs did good, and then that's what they did a music video for. You know, that's the, that's the song that they pushed. Based upon that. Exactly. Numbers, man. Yeah. Everything is numbers. Exactly. And they have, you know, from algorithms to I don't know what, everything is just... <clears throat> it's all numbers. It makes sense to them. These, you know, they pay people big bucks to fucking figure this shit out to make these gambles. It's like it's an algorithm. Everything. It, it's like betting against the house. You know, when when you, when you see some of these bets that Vegas offers, it's like, how could a bookie want to cover that insane amount of you know? Oh, because the numbers. He's got this fucking computer that does all these numbers for him, and it says that this makes the most sense, and that's just it. And you run with it. Yeah. And that's what these big time companies do. And and. I guess is the main cause of their success, obviously, you know. Um, so this this uh, album, this uh, track that you're putting out, did it get pushed back because of the coronavirus and now um, we're waiting a little bit longer? I wouldn't say it got pushed back because of the coronavirus. <clears throat> I think it's just that um, I wasn't 100% settled 
like I was showing you the video, right? And I'm not a hundred percent satisfied of, of the the end the end project, the ending. Song is fire. Um, I have everything ready to go. I'm just waiting on the music video. Once the music video is done, then I'll go ahead and I'll submit it to the distribution. The distribution, well, all the all of a sudden they'll grab it. It'll take them about two to three weeks. They'll submit it to Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Amazon Music, YouTube, and they'll come up with a with a launch date. And then they'll use their resources, you know, they'll hit up different PR agents and then, you know, they'll try to come up with like a story on how to release it and then we'll go from there. What is, uh, you, you, I mean, everything makes sense, but it also sounds like a long process. What do, you, what do you think is a rough guesstimate? I mean, try not to throw Corona so much in the mix, but you have to, but what do you think is a rough estimate? Somewhere like August, end of the summer? No, 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 no. We're talking about we're on the 30th. I would say by the third week of April, third or fourth week of April. Awesome. Okay. And so you, we had mentioned Two Nice earlier. Have you, uh, you, you a friend of Two Nice's? Do you know? Yeah, I was in the studio with him uh, about two weeks ago. Awesome. Awesome. And is there any kind of collab going there, or uh, just talks? I, I, you know, it's just talks. You know, we, um, one of the producers I work with, um, created something and they did something together and um, came out hot, super <laughs> dope. And then um, I actually threw him some some, some beats, and then <clears throat> I gotta go go back home, create some more stuff, and then when I feel like. I can have something that, that he might like. I'll send it to him and see if we come up with something. That's dope. So it's, it's so, good so. to see how they, how they get how they do that. You know how they talk to each other like that, and that's how that's how like a a DJ, a producer, uh, an artist. You know how they collab. You know yeah. going back and forth like that. Yeah, I mean, to me, you know, you always try to follow where your heart goes, and I always felt like in order to make it in Miami, you have to make it out of Miami. Ooh, shit, man. Wait, 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 wait let's explain tough. that a little more. Yeah. There's different ways mean? of looking at that. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Um, I feel like that Miami doesn't support their their own home team. Man. Oh, hundred percent. Oh, a man, that is good. There's so many envious people. People are haters, man. They don't want to. <laughs> it, it's so sad, bro. We keep talking about this more and more, and it's like it's disturbing as to. I don't know where it came from, and I'm sure we can break it down. And 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 I think it all somewhere stems from. The competitive aspect of when I talk to you, you still haven't seen the fucking movie, Cocaine Cowboys, you know. From that competitive aspect aspect that built since then, the dope boys competing against each other. Then it was the dope boys competing against each other through Flash, through who's got that more exotic animal. Fucking Tiger King is out on Netflix and making crazy money. Amazing. A lot of that shit was because of the dope boys from Cocaine Cowboys, okay? So just look how much shit stems from that. And then you keep bringing forward that all the top cities, New York, Miami, um, L.A., um, top states, you know, Cali, uh, New York again, Florida. They're very competitive. Na- ATL has come a long way. They start becoming competitive in nature in regards to the, the, the trend senders. New York and all of them being, they get the music first. This, is, this was true forever in a day. I don't know how accurate it is anymore right now, but they get the music first from overseas and shit. Everything goes to New York first. Um Cali had their own different swag, you know, their West Coast, you know, swag. The South has the Dirty South style. And somewhere there in Florida gets a mix of it all, even though we keep it Southern, we got that East Coast flavor. Then people start traveling. Everybody's traveling to everybody's cities. And then, they're, you know, they're, they're becoming residents there. And then if, if there's a city that attracts more people from other cities than Miami, I don't know, what is it? None. I don't think so. Everybody loves New York to go and visit. You motherfuckers ain't staying there. You're not living there. Mm-hmm. New Yorkans live there. They, you know, they, that's what they do. They're born and raised there. But you know how many New Yorkans migrated over here? You know how many California? California might have the least amount of people who migrate over here because they like it over there. The weather, the this, the that. But those who don't and want to go somewhere else, they come here. And then you have everybody else, all these Latin countries. So now you got this plethora of people who don't have no real commitment to where the grounds that they're standing on. They don't. Only true Miamians who are born and bred here, raised here, and don't have an outside influence pulling them away like, the fuck was that? Like, like you're born and raised in Miami, and yet you're, you're a Giants fan. How the hell did that happen? One of my best friends who I mentioned earlier, Juan, a.k.a. Mouse, you're born and raised in Miami, but you're a Chicago Bears fan. You're a Chicago uh, Bulls fan. Like, yeah. when the fuck did you become Chicago? So if you're not influenced by anybody, and you're a hardcore Miami loyal person, very, very few, very, very few, and that affects the industry in regards to music, golf, uh, fans of, of stadiums, you know, football teams, basketball teams, all that. 
and everything else. So I agree with you. I think it's a very valid point. I mean, so so then what what is it that you do to get out of that? You you blow up to what extent before you make the move? Yeah, man. You know, I always look at uh, you know Pitt's moves. You know, Pitt used to fucking grinding for years, and it wasn't until he fucking went out out of limb, went everywhere else. Then became Mr. Worldwide, and everybody's like, oh, shit, Pitbull. Uh. It's true, because he showed that he was worldwide. Exactly. He, was, he gave out that flavor. Exactly, 100%. So have you told your your lady you want to move to Colorado? What's going on? Nah, nah, I'm good. Nah, I love Miami. I'm never leaving Miami. Oh, nah. where, where I live, 100%. Man, yeah, where I live is, is peaceful, and uh, it's, it's great, bro. You know, if I want to go to the beach, it's a little drive, but I'll take it there. You know, I've got I've, I've deeded in so many cities, and... There is nothing like the Miami nightlife, man. A hundred percent. Nothing. You know, we're open almost twenty four hours in certain spots. That's right. That's you right. Know, most 100%. places are most places are closed at two o'clock in the morning. Let me ask a random question on that tip because I'm not a strip club guy, but I know that Miami has one of the very very few, or Florida, has one of the very few states that we do all nudity. Yeah. Who else does that? I have no clue, man. Because there's very few that do. I remember. I remember going. I, to a strip I'm not club. really a strip club yeah. person either. I've um, gone. I've gone to a strip club in Tampa, and they had you know that pasties on, and you know. Oh, that was. They're, yeah. they're, they're not full nude they're over there. You're right. So it's it's by county. Yeah. Holy shit! That's right. I forgot Tampa. My boy told me about that. Again, I'm not a strip club person, but I know that when they come here, one of the things that they brag about is, "Man, your your, your chicks get naked here in the strip clubs." Like, what do you mean? Isn't that what they all do? <laughs> no. A lot of places yeah, do pretty, not. And I'm pretty sure there's girls from all over the, the different counties, all over Florida, that they come down to Miami for the weekend. You know, they go work at the strip clothes and they go back home. Oh, yeah, for sure. I've, I've, I've known them. <laughs> for real? Like oh, traveling uh, strippers? Yeah, yes, yeah. man. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, then, and then you got strippers who, I mean, you just said it perfectly. Traveling strippers where there's too much competition. They already hired yeah, too yeah. many girls. There's too many young girls. There's too many whatever. I'm going to go down to the Keys for the weekend. And they'll go to the Keys or they'll, they'll, they'll go to different spots because, if, okay, imagine if, if Maria, who's voluptuously Latina as fuck, takes the drive to Tennessee, it's worth it because ain't no other Maria over there like that, you know? <laughs> there's probably whatever. White boys ain't into uh, but There's Penelope, who's a little extra, but there's no Maria, you know? So it's worth it to him, bro. I remember, I remember going to uh, King of Diamonds one time. and uh, K.O.D. And uh, I remember I only went because, you know, at that time I had a homeboy that he was trying to buy the club out. And he was like, all right, come with me. You know, 50 Cent is going to be here tonight. I'm like, all right, cool, fuck. I'm going to go see 50. And all right, and then, you know, I had the DJ come up, blah, 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 coming up from Tennessee. Blah, blah, blah. And they had strippers from different parts of the country, you know, <laughs> showcasing their, their, their shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's a car dealership. <laughs> Bro, yeah. for real. And then, and then, man, but those girls, you know, they do that. And they also know that they're going to get offered top dollar to fuck. Yeah, man. Don't get it fucked up, man. I don't care what any stripper said. If, strippers, if you're listening, call me out on there. I'll, t- I'll show you where I live, okay? 99.9% of, the of them will sell that pussy. Oh Period. Gosh. End of story. That's yeah. it. We just lost all our stripper viewers. Who? We got strip. No, they're probably like, <laughs> they probably turned around and started clapping with their ass, saying, yes, they would. Yes, they would. Because <laughs> it's true, bro. Look. I wasn't always clean. We know that. I've done, you know, a certain amount of dirt back in the past. And my main place for meetings was strip, strip club, one strip club, Pink Pony. And I remember the pony. You know, I hung out at the Pink Pony so much, but, you know, we always went to the, the top VIP where you didn't go up there unless you were somebody with money. You're taking a girl to buy her a drink, and then you're going to the, the VIP room. If you were just chilling... You had to be somebody like myself or my homeboy. You know, we were in the game, and we used to go over there, and that's where we'll have our meetings because I said I wanted, I didn't want to be seen. I wanted loud music. That way I can never think that we're being taped. You know, I was in deep back then. And, bro, I got I got so close to the staff that the GM used to take me to the back room, to the office, and we'll watch videos, and we'll watch security cam. The shit that I witnessed was out of this world, man, just out of this world. And it, and it just made me look at – Strippers in a whole nother way. I know guys, I'm not trying to knock anybody. Go, you know, go do your thing, man. Whatever. Whatever's your thing, it's your thing. But you can't tell me otherwise. A, a strip club is a dirty motherfucking place. Every chick on there is grabbing, touching, slobbing, kissing, mm-hmm. everything you can imagine on everything you can imagine. And that's just it. And I've seen strippers on cameras, their their husbands, their boyfriends, their moms, you name it, would call. Hey, I'm coming. I'm coming to pick them up. Hey, I'm coming to visit her. Hey, tell my girl I'll be right... And this chick's in the middle sucking dick in, in, in a VIP room 
finishes it, walks out, and goes right to her man and makes out with her man. If I'm lying, I'm dying, dog. And I've seen that on so many occasions. So that is <clears throat> Jesus. Yeah. That's There's a lot of disgusting. nastiness in strip clubs. So um, yeah, you can't convince me otherwise. But so these girls, they don't just do it to like, well, hey, why am I gonna come from Tennessee to to Miami? It's not like somebody's going to go all the way to Tennessee just to see her. No, she comes and she shows off. Somebody's going to offer her some top dollar because she's a brand new piece of ass in the South. 100%. Where was a dope boy? Or yeah, but now with social media and everything, they, they even, I've seen it before. Not that I follow strip club pages. Right. But they'll put like a flyer of this person's coming. Oh, to, to come perform. Yeah, yeah, bro. These strippers will get, they got to get paid like two grand for the night there's, there's girls on instagram it's crazy you don't re- obviously they don't write it but you can tell off of seeing in their pictures they're in a locker room in right. lingerie you're like okay there's two this things girl. this girl does now girls on instagram can make money off of something called was it fans only yeah that was part of our topics with, so the, uh, with the coffee there, yeah. with the coffee breakup and there's a girl who posted a picture of her checks and it's some <laughs> serious serious money can guys do it Go ahead, try it. No, I didn't say me, Gus. Your brand, bro. I ain't doing that. Come on. Come hey, on. this quarantine done messed me up with sponsors. I might just get desperate. And <laughs> Betty, I know I haven't talked about you for a bro, while. I, I just talked about fans only and bring on my mom. Because she's going right? to tell you, don't do it, Gus. Don't let Wes convince you. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make money. Hey, Beatrice, it's either that or, or, or slinging it on camera, like for real, for real. You know? Oh, my gosh. His mom is real cool. I finally, I finally met her. She's cool as fuck. I know she thinks a certain weird way about me, though. But I'm a good person, I promise you. Um, speaking of moms, man, what's up with your parents? Are they around? Are they still around, with you? Still around. Yeah, are they yeah, healthy? They're healthy, man. Where are they living here in Miami? Yep, I live about five minutes away from them. And, uh, oh, that's great. That was one of the things. To be close. To be close. Don't rub it. You're good. I'm getting scared. I know, but don't remember. It's the pressure part. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're good, man. I'm, you know, thankfully, knock on wood, my parents are still together and they're still they're still going, bro. I know, man. And they're healthy? Healthy. Are they, what were they about, like mid 60s, maybe? Uh, a little bit older than mid 60s, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I remember you having siblings. I think you had an older brother, right? No. I have uh, I have two younger sisters. Two younger sisters. Yeah. If you ask me their age, I fucking don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I was, I was, I was trying to think back. You were, I believe it was your, <clears throat> obviously a, your, the woman you're with, your wife. You've been with her for a while. I remember I was seeing somebody who was friends with your wife, or we were somehow tied together. And I remember I was at the house. I was, I was the last. That was one of the last times I saw you until I saw you years later. I was leaving the house that I slept over there with my girl at the time who I was seeing, and it was her best friend. And somehow we were tied because, oh, you lived across the street. From this chick. That's what it was. You lived across the street and you were literally walking out and I saw you. It was something weird like that. That was one of the last times I saw you until I came back in town after I went away for a little bit. <laughs> but uh yeah, it's it's, it's been it's been quite a while. That's that's for sure, man. So um what is your your handles, um, Nick? What what, what can we tell people to follow you in? Um uh, I know you got it all right. At DJ Chaos Music and that's K A O S music. At DJ Chaos Music, and that's um Instagram and Instagram and everything else. Everything else as well. Yes, what do you have? Twitter, all of it. I got everything: Facebook, YouTube, MySpace, AOL. You ain't Facebook. got TikTok. <laughs> Yo, surprising enough, I just Yo, downloaded you, the other day. Yeah, yeah. you got to get with it, man. I got, I got to, man. So you know, after I saw, um, I think it was. Uh, I Remember, it. I'm gonna assume you don't got to be in the video doing the silly TikTok yeah. shit, but you get somebody to do it for you. you know? I actually saw DJ Camillo, you know, doing doing a few things, and I was like, fuck it, bro. It's big it. for music, man. Yeah. It's that's what it is. It's TikTok is pretty much a it's just an outlet for music. There's like four or five songs that I heard on TikTok in the past four days, and I've been just listening to them listening to them in my car because I'm damn these songs go hard. But yeah. they're they're real they're real songs? Yeah, yeah, they're real songs. Obviously, it's I like thought you were saying like bored in my room, yeah, I'm bored in my room. <laughs> no, not whatever. that, not that song. That's just oh. that's just a person talking, but like a 15 second snippet of a song, I'm like, damn, this beat goes hard or whatever the song is, and it'll have the name of the song and I'll download it and listen to it. Damn. That's interesting, huh? It's obviously an outlet. I guess we should all, you know, for another another level, another. Man, we're locked in until mid May now. <clears throat> the governor just announced it, so you better download something. You people out there watching, man, y'all stay tuned. We got a lot of podcasts coming up. Like you just heard Gus said, um, we're gonna be locked down for a minute. Luckily, I don't know. I can't speak for New York or Cali. I don't I know. Just, I just spoke to my cousin who's in Jersey right now. He says it's really, really bad over there. Well, at least apparently, at least they still, people can drive somewhere. Yeah. He okay. says the streets are empty. 
Really? That's how empty, it should be. Empty. Well, yeah, well, and Cali is not. I know that because Joe Rogan talks about it, and then they get to do the podcast with him. Well, that, they went out, so we, we can just yeah, talk about exactly. it. Um, I don't know why that's doing that shit. But um, anyhow, yeah, so I guess, you know, with all the circumstances that we got going on right now, we all need to take advantage of it and, and, and make the best of it, you know, from TikTok to us putting out podcasts to you, you know, collabing and making music. I mean, shit, man. I know that isolation can do amazing things for people. Yeah. Um, it, it can break some, that's for sure. But those who entertain being creative and going and trying new projects and taking themselves into a different, uh, you know, mind frame, a, a different focus, you know, a, a, a state of focus, they can accomplish things that never otherwise could have because when, when you're the stress, everyday stress of going to work, your traffics, your, your you know, everything that just follows, your time restraints, you can't. But if you can do it now, a lot tough, a lot easier said than done with somebody like you who has kids and you and your wife are sharing the responsibilities. But when you got the time to do it now, if you live at home or if you share a household with somebody and, and you know, you're not overly stressed about what's going on, take advantage and do yeah. something with it. You know, you know not, now's the time to uh, spend time as much you can with your family. And, as uh, well, and yes. You get a chance, you lock yourself in your, in your room or wherever you can and just be creative and, and come up with content. That's right, That's content. It. It's all about content, and we keep we keep talking about that. And I, there's a lot of ideas that I also have that I'll, I'm going to start working on with Gus and with other people. And um, definitely content. It's not it's not just because of the situation we're in. It's just hey, I'll, I'm in the same I'm in the same scenario that I'm telling other people to take advantage of. Yep. And because I don't have to worry about all these clients, I got to go train and fuck. I got to go to work right now, and I'm not going to get off until eight. And then I got you know, since I don't have that now, my mind can go elsewhere. And I got a lot of different content ideas. We're working on Gus's um, docu series of in the uh, life of a fighter, and we're gonna do a, a series of him and you know, him getting ready for his fight and what it is to uh, to train the way he does, even under such circumstances. You know how we gotta sneak to the park or do what we gotta do. Um, then you turn around, flip it to Netflix, and make a meal. Boom, bro. You already know. <laughs> Netflix is where we're at. And by the way, they're paying more than that, dog. But yeah, man, I was just looking that up yesterday with my roommate. Um, anyhow, chaos. Anything you want to tell everybody out there? Listen, you know, to you right now, brother. Yeah, man. You know, follow me on my Spotify at DJ Chaos Music. I got some fire coming out. Check out what I have out now and uh, support the brother, man. Yeah, I, I love that you, you said support it. You finished with that. You got to support, yeah. man. Support, support, support. I think through these dire times, we're learning just how important it is to support those next to you, those locally, those around you. You know, if you, if you do that, we can all get by through this a lot better. And then we can realize, you know, that uh, it was there all along. The, the, the formula was there all along. Support, support. Don't hate. Don't be negative. Yeah. Support those who are trying to make better versions of themselves and they're trying to you know, change the world as well. Um, Gus, any shout outs? Anybody you want to say what's up to? Anybody you want to say anything to? Not, well, all our first responders, man, during this time. Great call. I really want to give a, a shout out to them. My father, my brother. You know, they're, they're, we don't realize they're sacrificing a lot. Yes. You know, having to be the, the first ones there and, and dealing with these people who do have the sickness that couldn't, kill you right i didn't i i i i'll be one to say that i i didn't take it serious at first but now realizing it this is something you definitely have to take serious 100 wash your hands just stay clean you know even if you go out wear some gloves be careful what you touch who you touch you know on, on that note i saw um somebody posted uh shit man I, I think it was neil degrassi i think please don't 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 hold me to that somebody posted a video of um nurses i don't know if it was uh assistance to the doctor or just regular RNs, it could vary. Bro, they had to layer up. It, it looked like they were going to go on the moon. They had to layer up about six different layers of shit. They had to put soft, like, Band-Aid cushions around. Yeah, they're because they're getting bruises yes. the mask. Then they had to put something on top of that, then a mask, then, it was another, mask, then another mask, then another. Bro, it was unreal. Like, three suits. Three masks, it was unreal. They go through a lot, man. And, and I'm glad that you said, you know, shout out to them because they don't get enough praise. So shout out to first responders, the medical field, everybody out there who's grinding hella, 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 hella strong to help us get through this a little bit quicker, a little bit safer, hopefully with a lot less casualties. You know, hopefully that, that turns down. I know that we're hearing that it's not. We're hearing that it's supposed to go up a little bit more before it goes down, but... Um, you know, you know so there's always exceptions. As long as everybody plays their part, you know, we, yeah. should, we should be good, man. That 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 is very true. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, my video editor Doug. 
I got this man working on overtime. I really do. Gus does too. We all do. And uh, you know, Doug, I know you're listening, and I know everybody else listening. Yeah, but before I close out, you know, Sobe Media. I want you guys Sobal Media to follow him on uh, on Instagram. Or just check him out on on his personal page. But Doug, I owe you a lot, man. I don't I don't think I say it enough. I see how hard you're working for the podcast. I see how you how you're working for your other projects and your other clients and your friends and all while being a great father um, and all through these times and all while you're not making any money from your business. So you mean a lot to me, my brother. Thank you so much. You guys go show him some love, support him. If you guys want projects to be worked on, video editing or other things. Don't don't hesitate yeah. to reach out to him or to reach out to any of us. You can DM any of us and we'll I do that. Instagram as well. thotties. Stop filming your own stuff. Get a professional. Damn right. If you really want to succeed <laughs> in that. Yo, Chaos, it's been a pleasure, dog. I can't I'm glad we retouched because I know we gotta we gotta go have some drinks and really talk, yeah. you know, about some past times and then we you know we, we haven't funny enough, man. I haven't had a drink in two and a half weeks and I think that's the longest in my whole career. Nothing wrong with that, bro. I, I wish I could say I, I'm the complete opposite, but <laughs> I've gone yeah, I'm, for I'm, sure three weeks strong without I might, that. I might just break today because my fight got moved. I'm, man, I'm going on like four months. Yeah, one, one, one night of a couple of drinks would never hurt yeah. you, bro. That's for sure. And especially if you're going to take a rest because, like I told you, you should because of your nosebleed thing that you got going on, bro. You should, you should literally take that. It's the my pressure nose, up there. My nose, my ear. Man, my whole oh, yeah, that ear. That's right. You got cauliflower building up, too. But you're training hard, dog. You're training hard. Nobody want that smoke. Yeah. They don't want that smoke. But again, yo, chaos. I'm out of love, my brother. Thank you for Appreciate stopping it, by. Thank you for being uh, somebody I've been looking forward to to have on for a while. Everybody out there, again, show your support. Follow chaos. Follow the Black Sheep Perspective. YouTube, uh, Spotify, iTunes, every other platform out there. Follow us. Um, go to my Linktree account. I got to fix that up, but it'll be fixed up. Don't forget about Gus Villamil, G-U-S-V-I-L-L-A-M-I-L on Instagram. And uh, stay safe, y'all. We'll talk to y'all soon. See you on the next podcast. Love and peace. Deuces.